All right, welcome back, everybody. Um, this is a companion video for lecture two, and it's an example for how to convert an NFA to a DFA. So this corresponds to the material in SIPSER, pages 56 to 58. So let me just draw an NFA for us here. Uh, I've got a start state, which I'll call A. Um, I guess in a zero, my alphabet will be zero, one. On a zero, I'll both stay in A and I'll move over to the next state, B. I'll also move over to B on a one, on a one and only on a one. I'll move over to a third state. That'll be an accept state that I'll call C. And because we want an example of an epsilon transition, I'll make an epsilon transition back from C to A. So this is an NFA here. Um, and I'm going to write out the formal definition of this NFA, just because it'll be nice to have for reference as we're trying to take it and turn it into a DFA that does exactly the same thing. So in particular, this NFA has a state set Q that contains A, B, and C. Um, uses the alphabet 0, 1. The start state is A. The set of accept states is C and only C. And finally, the transition function, delta, I'll just draw it as a table here, will tell me what to do if I'm in states A, B, and C, and I see any of the inputs 0, 1, or um, if I, I'm looking at an epsilon transition. So if I'm in state A and I see a 0, what do I do? Well, I'll go to A and I'll go to B. I'll split and follow both edges. Uh, if I see a one, I'll go to state B, and there's nothing for me to do. There's no epsilon transitions out of A. From B, um, I'll do nothing. My comp 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 computational branch will terminate on the empty string. Um, on one, I'll go to C, and there are no epsilon edges from B. And finally, from C, there are no edges out on a zero or a one, but there is an epsilon transition that will take me to A. So this transition function in particular will be very useful for us to reference as we write down an equivalent DFA to this NFA. So let's hop right into it. Um, first off, following the procedure that we mapped out in SIPSER, uh, we're going to want every possible set of states that we could occupy at a certain point in evaluating our NFA to be a single state in our DFA. So whether I'm in just A or just B or A and B at the same time, uh, there's still a finite number of sets of states I can occupy during the execution of my NFA. And after each one of these sets of states on any particular input, there's going to be one next set of states that I'll occupy. So that's what we're going to be capturing with this DFA. So Q prime, the state set of our DFA, is going to be the power set, the set of all subsets of Q. So that is, it's A by itself, B by itself, C by itself, A and B, let's see, A and C, B and C, A, B, C, and of course, you never want to forget the empty set, which is also a subset of A, B, C. Um, we'll draw this in a picture down below in a moment. Our alphabet for D is exactly the same. It's 0, 1, because that's what we'll be transitioning on. Our new start state um, will be A, or strictly speaking, it'll be the set containing A, because when we start our NFA, the set of states we occupy is just the one state A. And then finally, not quite finally, we've got transitions too, almost finally, uh, our set of accept states, we want our set of accept states to be any state that our NFA would accept on if it ended at that point, occupying those states. So certainly, if we ended the execution on our NFA and we were just in state C, we'd accept. But we also accept if we were in both A and C, right? If we finished reading in symbols and we were in both states, 
states A and C, we would accept because one of our live branches of computation was in C. Likewise for B and C and for A, B, C. So these are all of the accept states of our new DFA. And then finally, um, rather than write out the transition function, I'm going to draw a picture down below. So um, let me zoom out just a little bit so that I can fit all this in. I'll make my pen a little bit smaller. And let's draw our state diagram. I don't necessarily know where all of these edges are going to go yet. So I'm just going to draw my eight states in a circle and drawing the edges as needed. So these are just going to be the um, states in Q prime. So the set containing A, the set containing B, the set containing C, AC, BC, um, I'll make that AB because I've got some notes here and I prefer not to mess this up and confuse everybody. So let's make that AB. Let's make this one AC. And this last one BC. Of course, we've also got ABC and finally the empty set. So um, how are we going to fill out our transitions. Well, all we have to do is look at these states in turn and say, if I were the NFA and I were occupying exactly these states, where would I go next? For example, let's start with the state set A at the top here. If I'm occupying only the state A in my NFA and I read in a zero, what happens? Well, I can read this right off my transition function. I'll go to A and I'll go to B. So in my new DFA, I'll go to the state AB on a zero. Uh, likewise, if I'm in A and I see a one, well, then I'll just go straight to B. Um, we'll do the same thing for B. So if I'm in B and I see a zero, what happens? Well, my branch of computation dies. Uh, in particular, if I'm thinking of the NFA computation as a whole, I have one live branch and that branch is in B and I read in a zero. Well, then the live branches are occupying no states at all, the empty set. I'll go from B to the empty set. And of course, once I'm occupying no states, once I have no live branches, I'm gonna stay there. So the empty state is sort of like the death state, the bad state for this simulation. Um, what happens if I go from B if I'm occupying just B and I read in a one? Well, certainly I go from B to C. Um, but before I draw that arrow from B to C, uh, I'm going to reintroduce one little technicality that came up in our proof, which is we have to account for epsilon edges, but we can't use epsilon transitions in a DFA. So by fiat, we decided um, we're going to include all of the places you can get to after reading in a character, and all of the adjacent epsilon transitions after it as one step in our DFA. We could do it the other way and do epsilon transitions beforehand, but I'll just add a little note here. Note, um, we go to all states, reachable with the next symbol, and the epsilon transition. So from B, when I read in a one, yes, I'll go from B to C, but I'll also take that epsilon transition and I'll split, have one branch remain in C and the other branch go to A. So this will actually take me on a one from B to AC. Um, now from C on a zero and a one, um, I'm going to go to the empty set. Now, 
Why am I not considering the epsilon transition? It's the same decision we were talking about before. I've decided to consider that epsilon transition in terms of what happens after I move to C from B, not before I move from C to someplace else. Arbitrary choice, but it'll keep us consistent to um, consider moving from C without the epsilon transition. Um, from A, B, now it gets slightly more complicated. Imagine I'm executing things in my NFA and I'm occupying two states. I have two live branches, one in A and one in B. If I read in the zero, the branch in A will stay in A and also split off and send a branch to B. The branch in B will die. So on that zero, I'm actually gonna end up still being in A and B afterwards. On a one, the branch in A will die and the branch in B will go to C. Um, sorry, on a one, the branch in A will go to B, the branch in B will go to C, and because of the epsilon transition, um, we'll split again and keep one branch in C, send the third one back across the epsilon edge to A. So hopefully you can see why if I have branches in A and B, after a one and my one epsilon edge, I'm now occupying all three states, A, B, and C. Um, so I'm just going to fill out the rest of these here. Hopefully you can check my work in the comments below. Say, hey, you screwed up. Um, this can be a slightly confusing procedure sometimes. It is perfectly accurate, but it's easy to have a brain fart and draw an edge in the wrong direction. Maybe if I make an error, I'll even leave it in here for you guys to find. Uh, but I hope I've been consistent on the first few steps. So that's AC on a zero to AB and, sorry, on a one to B, BC on a one, I'll wrap around here to C and on a zero to the empty set, ABC on a one, we stay in ABC and on a zero, we're going to go to AB. Um, to complete this, I'd wanna to remember to mark A as my start state and all of my states with C's in them as accept states. Um, and that'll be my completed DFA that if I've done this correctly, should do exactly the same thing as the NFA above. Um, if I even wanted to simplify this a little bit more, I might note, hey, this BC state here, right here, there's no way to get to it. It only has out arrows, so it's redundant. It's not actually an important part of this DFA. Similarly, once I've nixed the BC state, uh, there's no way to get to this C state. So I can cross that out as well. And the remaining six states and their transitions should be a DFA that do the same thing as my NFA. So if I wanted to be absolutely sure, uh, what I would do is I would go back and I'd test some strings on both and make sure they end up, they accept on a certain string, if and only if the other one accepts on that particular string. So that's all for this example video. Thanks for watching. See you in class.